hi and welcome to my channel or if you're a returning subscriber hello again it's so nice to see you back here for another video i hope you're all having an amazing day today my name is tess lark and this is an art and beauty channel so if those are videos you're interested in make sure you're subscribed because i'm here for you every single week and this week we are going to be making some pressed flower resin jewelry I'm so excited about today's project. This is one of my favorite ways to use resin, and it's actually one of the first ways that I started using resin. When I started making a crafting series on my YouTube channel about a year ago now, I also made another video about preserving flowers and resin for jewelry, so I'll go ahead and link that down in the description below. But I feel like my filming style has changed a lot. I've got a new camera, and so I wanted to make an updated version of that video for you guys today. So this is a really simple project. It's definitely suitable for beginners, anyone that's just getting started with resin art and it also makes a great little holiday gift so if you have some time maybe you could make a little batch of these to give out to friends and family and things like that and because the holidays are coming up I would like to remind you that you can find everything that I make for sale on Etsy and that is at fragilebeings.com and I'll go ahead and list my shop down below as well and then one last thing before we get started if you do like this video please go ahead and make sure to give it a like it not only helps out my channel a whole lot but it also lets me know that I'm making content that you want to see for me and let's just start crafting so I'm gonna start out by painting my backings and I'm just using a regular white acrylic paint and I got these backings off of Amazon and as always I'll go ahead and link all the materials that I use for this project down below in the description so if anybody is curious those will all be down there for you so you can find them easily if you want to try this project for yourself And when I'm using white paint on a darker backing, I will let my layers dry in between and then go ahead and give it about two to three layers just to make sure that you can't see the color of the metal underneath the paint. Then after the paint is completely dry, it's time to place my flowers. And if you've seen some of my other resin art videos, um, I have these flowers that I went ahead and ordered from Amazon and I've used them for a couple projects now. They're super cute, really convenient. And so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and use E600 glue, which is a really strong jeweler's glue and I'm using just like a little piece of wire, but you could use a toothpick or something like that. Wire is just kind of what I have on hand, so I'll be using that to put my glue down. And if some of your pieces are a little bit too big, don't be afraid to just go ahead and use your fingers to break it off. I also have a small pair of scissors that I'll be using to cut down some petals later when they're a little bit too big. But yeah, just manipulate your tools and everything that you have so you get a nice little composition in each piece.
because these don't lay flat on their own, I just took some of the wax paper, which by the way is what I'm using underneath my pieces so my resin doesn't get onto my desk. But I'm just folding those up to use them as little crutches to make sure that each piece is level so you don't get resin pooling at the bottom. Then I use a sharpie to mark the measurements for my resin because sometimes when you're pouring resin into a clear container it gets kind of hard to see exactly where the lines are. And I'll put on my gloves and then I'll be measuring out um, my resin which will be 50% hardener and 50% resin. And then I'm just going to stir up my resin, making sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the container. And this is sped up um, four times, but you want to make sure that you're kind of moving slowly. You don't want to incorporate a lot of air into the resin as you're mixing it. And you'll see here that it'll start getting cloudy and then it will clear up again. And after that, I like to let it sit for a little bit, hit it with my heat gun just to pop any bubbles that have come to the surface. And after that, it will be time to pour the resin. And for smaller pieces like this, I like to use my popsicle stick to put the resin into each mold just because I know that I'm going to be able to move a little bit slower, not pour out as much at once because it's really easy to overload these guys and you don't want to get any spillover. You can also use your popsicle stick to go in and kind of move around the resin that's already in the piece just to make sure that you're getting all the way to the sides without just adding more and more because the resin is pretty viscous so it does take a little bit for it to fully settle to where it's going to be. After each piece is filled, I will use my heat gun on the lowest setting and go back in and pop any bubbles that have started to rise to the surface. Okay, so I went ahead and I let my pieces set up overnight and they are totally hard and cured now, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish them up by putting them on chains to make them into necklaces, and I'll show you how I do that next. And to save some time in this video, I went ahead and pre-cut my chains for the most part. I'll cut one on camera just to show you how I do it. It's really easy. I just lay down my measuring tape and make sure that it's flat. For these pieces, I like them to be about 27 inches because I like them to lay pretty low on the body. And yeah, so we will just put them on chains and finish them up. clasps and also a couple different sizes of jump rings and I'm just going to show you how I attach these pendants to their chains to make them into necklaces and with these settings it's kind of nice as you can see there is already a little hole right in there so I'm just gonna go ahead and put my chain right through that hole And then on the right side, I'm going to attach my lobster clasp and on the left side, I'm going to attach a larger jump ring to make sure that we can close it. So I'll use my pliers to open up one of these smaller jump rings here. And then next, I'm just going to attach my lobster clasp just like that. And then this is going to get attached to that one side of the necklace. And then that jump ring is just going to get closed. So then we have one side of our necklace and we will finish it up with the other side. So again, I'm just opening up my jump ring using my pliers and I will attach a larger jump ring to this one. And then that gets attached to the other side of our necklace.
great. And then we have our first finished necklace. All right, and now I'm just gonna finish up the other pieces. Hi. Hi. You wanna come say hi? It's been a while. Don't say hi. Come say hi, Po. Come say hi, Po. Oh, look at this girl. Can you say, oh, can you say meow? Okay, she wants to get down. <laughs> I feel like it's been a while since we've had a Poe cameo. Anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these pieces. All right, so my necklaces are all finished up and I think they turned out so cute. This one is definitely one of my favorites, but I also really love this pale pink color of these ones. They're so pretty. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it informative or helpful in some way. Let me know which one of your favorites is in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And if you did make it all the way to the end, leave me a flower emoji in the comments so that I know that it's real and I will see you in the next one. Bye.